Hi guys and welcome to the official guide to the Mac Loop, CAD East and CAD West. Although if I'm perfectly honest, it's more CAD East than it is CAD West. And when I say official, what I'm saying is it's the only one of its kind. So there you go. It's like landing on the moon and planting that flag. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm making this the official how to, where to, etc. Everything you need to know about the Mac Loop will be included in this video where to find the Mac Loop, where to park, etc, 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 when to go there, and of course, how to shoot. Camera recommendations, lens recommendations, etc, etc. So this is a video I took two weeks ago and it's really, I, I made it to offer you guys an insight into what you can kind of expect if you make the same kind of visit that I did. I spent two days and two nights camping as well and really it's to cover the highs, the lows, the lots of time when you're hanging around doing nothing then all of a sudden boom it just all happens. Hopefully I've captured the emotion of that in this film. So I'm currently stood in Cad West's car park and to gain access to Cad West you simply, you, well you can park your car here, there's enough car parking spaces for about 20-25 cars um, possibly a bit more, I'm not quite sure but it's there or thereabouts so plenty of car parking spaces although it will fill up very quickly on popular days, very quickly. You gain access there so it's very easy to gain access, a little bit of a climb up there, then it's a steady old jaunt all the way across to around about there somewhere and trying desperately to see then there's a bit of a hike start again then there's a bit of a hike all the way up to about there and quite frankly you can go as high up there as you want that's cad west cad east on the other hand is on the other side of the road and how you get there this is one way Park your car here on Cad West side. Take a walk down to there. There's a public access gate across there. And another one about three or four hundred yards further up. Then what you can actually do is, if I can see myself across there, is you go wandering across a path there. Wandering, wandering, wandering across a path. Then you end up up there somewhere. And then you've got to climb up there, climb up there, climb up there. And that is a hell of a climb, as you can see, until eventually you end up up here and that is a hell of a climb however there's a much easier way to get there than that the easiest way to find the gate that gives you access to cad east so if you drive into cad west's car park then turn left point your vehicle down the hill so come out of the car park and turn left it's exactly nine tenths of a mile down the hill and it's on the right hand side in actual fact it's the only turning on the right you can make that's the turning coming up just now it's a small turn off and you'll be met by a gate the gate will be locked to hold the livestock in now it's important that the gate must look like that if the gate looks like that do not enter because that is the private property in the private land of the farmer if you see that sign, once again, don't enter because that's the private land of the farmer. And he's asked me to include that information or this information in this video that I'm making now. So I'm making this video uh, with the knowledge and the backing of that farmer. Okay, so drive in, obviously close the gate behind you, up the hill. I'm actually going very slowly, by the way, but I've sped this up times five. So this is 500% sped up just to rush things then you'll be met by another farmer's gate so you'll notice now when I open this gate if you're on your own like I was today you'll notice that there's a small hook on the left hand side that's designed specifically for that to hold that gate in place so that you can drive forward stop return back to the gate and obviously close the gate and make sure it's locked to keep that livestock in just to stress once again I am actually driving up here very slowly 
Um, I've sped it up times five, so it looks as if I'm going fast, but I really am. I'm being very mindful of the wildlife and certainly being very mindful of the sheep. Some of the sheep will actually sleep in the road. In actual fact, you can see one sleeping on the road there. They do that to gain some warmth throughout the night. So I know it doesn't look like it, but I really am driving slowly up here. On the right hand side there, you can see Cad East just starting to come into view. On the left hand side there, you can see the area where we park our vehicles. I uh, really must stress it isn't a car park, but it's where we all park our vehicles. Carefully parked, you can get four, maybe five vehicles in there. You can go through the gate, just through there, and down that road there, about 300 yards on the right-hand side, there's more space to park about three or four carefully parked vehicles. You can park, you can't park, it's not official, but people do park their cars, as you can see with that Volkswagen there, just on the left, on the right-hand side there, but sometimes, please be mindful, it'll be very, very boggy, and it's very easy to get bogged in. Trust me, I know. Okay, so you gain entry into CAD East by following my route with my finger there, in through that kind of farmer's entrance, zigzag up the hill and get to the top of the hill and voila!
Now, I really want this guide to the Mac Loop to be a community project. So if you do me a favor, if you watch this video and you feel that you might also have information that might contribute to what I've actually included in this video, then I really don't mind you sharing that information. Just put that information in the comments below. Likewise, if you've got a video or two, maybe you've just recently visited the Mac Loop and maybe you've seen some unusual aircraft, uh, or you might wanna show it from your perspective as opposed to my perspective, then I really don't mind that. Put that information, put your links once again in the comments below. What I'll actually do then is I'll sift through all that, all the comments, all the links, and I'll pick up the best and I'll transpose that onto my webpage. Of course, I'll give you all the credits back, so don't worry about that. But I really want this to be, uh, or this video, to be a community project. So please contribute if you possibly can. Let's talk about the camera gear. Let's talk about how to actually physically take pictures. So first of all, let's talk about the camera gear. Well, it might surprise you to know that if you take this with you, it'll be the same as taking this. Okay, in other words, this is a pro camera body, this is a pro camera lens, this is an entry level camera, this is an entry level lens. Don't get too et up on the equipment. Don't feel, I can't go because I haven't got a good enough camera. Any digital SLR camera will do. Any camera will offer you the opportunity to take some fantastic pictures, possibly some pictures of a lifetime. So please don't get et up with the camera. Now what I will say though is a good tip is, Try and go with a lens that has a reach between three and 500 mil. That would be my recommendation to you. Because if you remember, these jets are still between two and 400 yards away from you, irrespective of whether you're on CAD East or CAD West. There's still some distance away from you. They're not huge things either to photograph. So I would definitely recommend a lens of between three and 500 mil. But it's not that important. Trust me, I see guys down at the Mac Loop and they're there with their iPhones. They're either just videoing the aircraft as they're coming past, they'll then upload them to YouTube, get thousands of views, all their friends will like it, and so on and so forth. So it's really about what you want to achieve from it. But my recommendation is, don't worry about the digital camera, but if possible, a lens with a reach between three and 500 mil would be ideal. Now, how to actually take the pictures? Well, Again, you could shoot in various different camera modes, but let's make life easy for ourselves. My recommendation to you guys is simply to shoot in shutter speed priority. Tip, if you shoot in shutter speed priority, make sure your ISO is set to auto. That way, when you pick the camera up, all you need to think about then is simply what shutter speed to set your camera to. Make life easy for yourself. Now, when it comes to shooting jets, my recommendation is, obviously, if you turn the shutter speed up, so a thousandth of a second and slightly higher, you're pretty much always guaranteed to get that picture. You can move, you can shake ever so slightly, the aircraft's moving quite quick, but because you're shooting with a fast enough shutter speed, you're always guaranteed to get that picture. But if you want a more dramatic picture, then you'll have to start slowing your shutter speed down between the 100 and 500th of a second mark. So anything lower than 500 of a second, with the aircraft traveling between three and 500 miles an hour in such close proximity, then you will blur that background out and create the drama in the images. If a propeller aircraft comes through, now it's a slightly different ball game. A, they're moving slower, but B, the purists out there, when you take a picture of an aircraft that has propellers on them, then the purists out there will always want to see that aircraft with movement in the propellers. That means that if you get, say for instance, an RAF Hercules traveling through, then you really need to be shooting that at around about, certainly less than 200th of a second, so maybe 125th of a second. That way it's ideal because then you'll get, if you can, if you're lucky enough, you'll freeze the aircraft. Bear in mind that the aircraft isn't or won't be moving that quick but the propellers will then be blurred if you shoot it at 125th of a second. Okay, but don't get too wet up with that. If it's the very first time that you actually photograph these aircraft, then my recommendation is turn that shutter speed up 
turn it up and let's just get the pictures. Then either later on in the day or the following day or on your next journey, you can come down and think, do you know what? I want to improve on my pictures. So next time I come down, next time an area of Hercules travels through the Mac loop, I'm going to slow my shutter speed right down and experiment with those shutter speeds. But just think, if you've got a 400 mil lens on, your hand holding it, you're shooting it at 125th of a second because somebody told you you should do, then of course the danger you've got is any slight movement here will render the aircraft blurred. So it's a bit of a game. You've got to weigh up what's right for you, what your experience is. But more importantly, go there, shutter speed priority, ISO, set it to auto, and play around with those settings and have some fun. Have some fun, that's what it's about, have some fun.